All right, um, hi everyone. Uh, so today, uh, I'm gonna follow up on a request someone uh, made in the comments. A uh, good uh, suggestion to uh, give you guys a well, a few examples of uh, different uh, Ottoman armies because I've made a general video in the past. Um, about um, you know how to build an Ottoman army for wargaming, uh, but um, in the comments, uh, Dex McHenry requested uh, some specific examples, which was a uh, good idea. So I uh, made. We'll take a look at uh, three uh, different Ottoman armies. Uh, one, uh, so the one on screen now, late 16th century. Uh, one from the early 17th century and one from the uh, early 18th century actually so um, you know across a pretty wide range of time um, you know and one thing uh, I you know it's kind of hard is uh, researching this is like some of the uh, chronicles that I have that have been published you know it's not always um, as simple as going to the index and and uh, you know finding uh, finding the, the information it's might not be um, in there um, in the first place because you know not all these chronicles are are made equally or you know the authors had different kind of goals um, and uh, you know sometimes the people that edit them for publication don't um, are really actually interested in the military stuff, uh, but uh, anyway, that's okay. Um, so first one we have here, uh, this is the Georgia and Azerbaijan campaign, uh, 1578-79, against the uh, Safavid dynasty in Persia. This is actually probably one of the most well-documented uh, campaigns uh, overall, just in terms of uh, the number of uh, manuscripts uh, written about it, uh, both prose and poetry works. Uh, obviously there's a lot of documents and those have been uh, published in some some pretty good um, uh, Turkish graduate theses. Uh, so fairly well documented uh, and um, so here we have a list of the troops. Uh, we have the <clears throat> second corps of the palace cavalry. Um, they're called the Ulufejian um, so these probably would have been armored cavalry, but I'm not quite sure. We have 3,000 Janissaries, uh, 500 light cannon. Uh, so these would have been, um, the translation, according to the dictionary, is like a falconet or something like that, but, um, yeah, probably a light cannon of some kind. Uh, we have archers, mounted archers from Mesopotamia. Uh, we have um, Iraqi troops, uh, also mounted, I think, carrying swords and javelins. We have uh, horse archers from Anatolia, so these would have been uh, most probably the uh, nomadic kind of Turkmen that lived in Anatolia uh, during the 16th century, late 16th century. And we have the musket and sword infantry from Ramilius. These would have been Sekban. Uh, you know, provincial uh, mercenaries, uh, professional kind of soldiers. Uh, and then we also have the Timar cavalry from Anatolia and uh, the forces uh, mounted, again mounted from the Kurdish emirs. That would have lived in eastern Anatolia. Later on, uh, during the course of the campaign, they get 5,000 Tatars. Uh, and along with some Circassians. So Circassians are a, a mountain people uh, in the Caucasus. Uh, they lived in, used to be uh, in the North Caucasus and then it, it was conquered by the Russians in the early 19th century and they were all uh, forcibly deported. Uh, most a lot of them settled in, uh, in, in the Ottoman Empire later on. And no guide Turks. So these all would have been mounted uh, horse archers, probably. 
Uh, and uh, there's a lot of sources, like I said, but the one that I think would be easiest for you guys to find would be this book here. It's publication information. Uh, and the author, Minadoy, he was uh, the like a Venetian uh, agent in Aleppo uh, in, in Ottoman Syria. So uh, he would have, uh, and he knew Ottoman officials, and he knew uh, some, uh, I think at, at least one Safavid that defected to the Ottoman side. Um, and that was how he wrote this, this book. And this covers the entire uh, Ottoman Safavid war that goes from 1578 to. 1590, so I definitely wanted to check out. You can probably find a PDF. You can find a PDF of it online pretty easily. So uh, that's that's what you see there. So mix of these infantry and obviously a lot of cavalry, any Ottoman army uh, f until you know, maybe the 19th century is going to have a lot of cavalry. So next uh, slide, uh, we have Hutin, which I, I did a video about. Um, several months ago, I, I, I did read a translation of um, this uh, chronicle that I have here as a source. Uh, this one, uh, the chronicle is not as clear as to how many in terms of numbers and, and who some of these things are. Um, you probably imagine, you know, the, the person reading this in the sixth, 17th century uh, would have taken a lot of these things for granted. So, you know, the explanation wouldn't have been necessary. Uh, so we have the provincial Sanjak forces of Romelia. Uh, again, these probably would have been cavalry for the most part, uh, but then also, I'm sure there's probably infantry also. Um, not quite clear based on the source. Uh, the governor of Uzi, which I'm not sure where that's supposed to be actually exactly, uh, but Iskander Pasha, so his troops, again, probably would have been levied cavalry. Uh, more Sanjak uh, forces from Bosnia. So, um, just to make this clear, Sanjak literally means banner, but um, it's also an administrative unit of, um, you know, of a provincial level kind of military command. Uh, chronicler uh, uh, Abdul Qadir Effendi also mentioned some Akarman lids and Dobra jellas. I, I'm assuming these were probably some kind of Turkmans or something like that, but I, again, I, I'm not quite sure. Uh, we have the some Imperial artillery from the Balkans. We have uh, 500 Jebajis, so these would have been uh, the kind of the artillery support troops, basically, is, is the best way to put it. We have 10,000 Tatars and uh, two battalions from the lords of Moldovia and Wallachia, so these were tribute-paying vassals to the Ottoman state. Um, but in turn, you know, internally the Voivoda were uh, able to kind of set certain policies, but they paid a tribute to the Ottomans. Uh, and this battle was uh, one where the Ottomans defeated a combined uh, Polish-Lithuanian uh, army and uh, combined Polish and Cossack army, and uh, it was a major defeat for the Poles. And then two years later, they 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 rout the Ottomans at Setsora, uh, which is, I think, uh, Hutin and Setsora in the future is something I'd like to make a, like a convention game, maybe something where I could run like Hutin one day and then Setsora like the next day of the convention or something. I think that would be fun. But anyway. Uh, so not as much information as this one, uh, but that's just based on this one source I read. Um, you know, I could uh, get, um, I'd have to look at maybe some documents, archival documents, to get maybe a better idea. Okay, and uh, the last one. Uh, this is a new campaign I, I, I just learned about uh, recently, actually. But this is the Prut, Prut or Pruth River campaign in 1711. This is the... Uh, Ottomans defeated uh, the army of uh, uh, Peter the Great, uh, and it was waged because the Ottomans uh, had the King of Sweden 
uh, you know, was like hiding in the Empire. Uh, and so this was during the Great Northern War, and, uh, you know, the Russians wanted the King of Sweden. Um, but uh, so they, they fought a battle at the Prut River, which is near uh, in the, you know, kind of Moldova, Wallachia kind of region. Um, so here, uh, the source is this diary from a Janissary secretary. He was, he was quite old when he was on the Prut campaign, uh, but he probably knew pretty well kind of the, the, the logistic and organizational stuff. Um, and he gives more details than some of the other sources I've seen. So 97,000 infantry and cavalry Janissaries. To be honest, I'm not sure what's meant by cavalry Janissaries, and also the edition I got this from is the English translation, so I'm not sure how certain things that they decided to translate them, but um, anyway, that's just kind of a detail. 97,000 infantry and cavalry Janissaries um, in what is termed seven branches, and each of these seven branches I guess you could probably call it like a division, uh, 15 Orta, uh, which could be translated as battalion or regiment maybe, like eight or 900 people, and then 25 cannon, uh, and then we have some of these Serden Gechti, kind of like a vanguard mounted troops, uh, 100 units of 50 men each, and they're kind of att they're attached to the Janissaries. Uh, we have provincial forces from Bosnia uh, and Rumelia. Rumelia is Greece and the Balkans, basically. Um, 40,000 infantry and cavalry, and under the command of those governors. And also he singles out the Serbian and Croatian uh, Sekban. So, again, more of these, um, more of these uh, mercenaries. And uh, more, more infantry commanded by the Romelian governor. Uh, what they looked like or what they kind of weapons they had is not really clear. Probably they they were musketeers, though. That's that's my educated guess. Janissaries from Egypt, which is uh, quite interesting. Usually the Egyptians were not deployed uh, that far into Europe, but uh, they did it. Um, they did it this time, I guess, probably because. Well, probably because by this point they didn't have Hungary anymore, so Egypt was a really well-populated and, and wealthy province. Um, the artillery, artillerymen, and then those those Jebicis I mentioned in the last slide. Uh, we also have the Kurdish uh, Kurdish levies, uh, probably mounted, uh, but it's not not really said. Uh, and then of course the staff, uh, the Grand Vizier Baltaji Mehmed Pasha. Uh, and then the baggage train and, you know, all of the camp followers that any kind of army from this period you would expect. Um, so, uh, these are some examples uh, of, you know, different Ottoman army compositions over the, I guess, three centuries, uh, give or take. Um, I will try and do more of these as I come across the information uh, like I said, it's not always easy to get these out of the, like, narrative sources. Um, and um, even in the documents, it's not always, like, explained fully uh, what, you know, what, what that means exactly. Like, what are the, you know, the, the Sanjak of um, Romelia, let's say, you know, when they raise troops, what does that actually look like? Um, you know, you kind of got to uh, go, go deep and... Um, and, uh, and then, or just make some, you know, kind of educated inferences based on the, the information available. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's the video. Um, I hope you, you liked it. Um, I do have a project right now. I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, Siege of Rhodes from some Ottoman sources. So I might, if I can, if there's an order of battle I can discern, uh, or, or find in, in, in the, uh, manuscript I'm working on, I will make a video about that because it's that's a really interesting campaign, very famous, of course. Uh, so um, I hope you guys again. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found this informative. 
Um, and I will, uh, you know, talk to you guys in the next video.